Now, we cannot not talk about the man who's kept England in the hunt for entire series. <laughs> for a period of two years, everyone was wondering where he's going to get his next 100 from, just like Virat Kohli is wondering. But Joe Root, what great form he is in. Let's talk about his batsmanship as well as how he's carried the England team with so many key players missing, looking ahead to the Ashes, etc. Uh, it is the ridiculous statistics keep on coming. Um, yeah, that conversion rate. I mean, it's still, you know, one fifth, seven fifty plus scores, six of which have been hundreds, two of which have been double hundreds. He's now six times this year scored the highest uh, individual score in the match on both sides, which is a record, and it's only August. Yeah. There were, I mean, the the gap between him and the next best in the England team is is, is staggering. Uh, it really is the. Uh, there's a long thread that Andy Zaltzman, uh, Test Match Specials scorer, did on Twitter, which is well worth having a look at, putting it in historical terms in terms of the percentages of um, of a team's runs that he's scored in a calendar year. And the Lord's, the, the sorry, the Headingley hundred was certainly his least pressure, his least pressured of the uh, of the one so far, but possibly the one that he was in most control, and perhaps those two go together. But you know, with Ishan Sharma off color and Siraj taking a little while to get into it. Uh, but he, his his footwork is 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 incredible. His he there was some there was some highlights or some some statistics shown on the TV of maybe India bowling a little bit too short at him. But part of that is because he's so good on the back foot. He's so good at turning those back of a length deliveries, getting up on his toes and punching it away through backward a point or through cover. Uh, he plays so late. He's got incredible placement. You know, he's up on his toes and 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 turning perfectly decent deliveries into four into four scoring opportunities and then and then and then they they pitch up to him uh, and then he's able to flick you away or to or to drive you he's not driving down the ground which i think is people say play straight play straight but i think in england with the ball moving actually that's not a good idea you 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 don't want to be playing down the ground too much you you joe root has set the has has shown what what to do he's using those those spaces uh behind square or just in front of Square and he's made India. You know, Virat Kohli's been trying to put fielders in all sorts of different positions in that in that arc from from deep third round to cover, and with, wherever he goes, Joe Root finds the gap. And it, it it's his ability to score off good deliveries. It reminds me it reminds me very much of Stephen Smith uh, at, at his at his peak. Hmm. Uh, it just how it seems almost impossible to stop him scoring uh, at, at, at this point, and he's. I was there on the on to watch him at Trent Bridge uh, when he scored the the first hundred of the of the series, and it was an absolute delight to to watch him to watch him play. He he looks um, visibly a different class from frankly everyone else in the series, and there are some very good batters on on both sides. You you see how how hard Virat Kohli is having to work at the moment to. To get decent scores in the in the series, you know, he looked pretty good for his fifty five. Uh, he looked okay for his forty odd uh, earlier in the earlier in the series, but that that's a guy who's really having to struggle for form and having to almost fight bits of his technique. For Joe Root, everything is just clicked, and you know the work he did over lockdown, which we which we heard about in between the third and fourth test, where he looks at all of his dismissals from the analyst. He's just internalized all of that, and th- this is the sort of patch where even someone as good as Joe Root may not have again and it just shows you how the the difference between a player really fighting for themselves on the one part and the one who's finding things very very easy on the on the other and the only battle really is how much support can he get and how how much can he maximize this moment it's been absolutely joyous to watch Root in 2021. When he came to the crease at Headingley I think he was three quarters of the way to the wicket (laughs) before he actually we went into a walk. He'd skip, trotted, danced his way. I mean, he looked like a man who just wanted to go about his work <laughs> massively. Um, and he's got some record. You know, what the only other English players to score six in a calendar year, I think, were Michael Vaughan and Dennis Compton. Two test lists left of this series. Let's say there's three Ashes tests because that's up in the air. You know, he's got the likes of Mohammed Youssef and Viv Richards in sort of most most runs in a calendar year in his sights, the way he's racking them up at the moment, you know, record after record for him. Um, and as Nako says, it, it, all good things must end. He, <laughs> but he probably feels it won't at the moment. 
because it's just his confidence is so high, he's so light on his feet, he's seeing the ball magnificently. And he, yes, you know, if you take him and Anderson out the England side, then how good would England be? But if you take, you know, one or two Indian players out, you, you could argue the same. So uh, it is it is a Anas Magnificus for him. Mirabilis, is that it? Not Magnificus. Anas Mirabilis, that's what a phrase I was looking for. And I'm sure he'll want to keep it going. Just don't ask me any more Latin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And listen, is he going to keep going till 45, 50? I don't know. He seems to get younger and younger. Really fired up. Uh, and he probably was the one who made the difference. Well, not if Knuckles captain, because he'd be you know, wants to turn him into the workhorse that's just plugging away for well, over after I mean, over. But... I was saying that relative to Mark Wood, which is uh, who really you shouldn't ever be rolling for more than four overs in one in one go. I mean, Anderson bowled, I think, seven or eight overs on that first on that first morning, just because he was taking so many wickets. It seemed like a like a shame not to. I mean, there's this curious thing with Anderson that it seems like a blip, but it's been going on for depending on how you slice it, either 14 or 22 test matches of not taking very many wickets in the second innings, which has been going on for a long time, actually. I think in his, before the start of day five, I haven't updated the stats, or day four, rather, he'd taken his wickets in the last 22 tests, so going back to the start of the Sri Lanka tour in 2018. He'd been taking his first innings wickets at 18 and his second innings wickets at 48, which is a bizarre gap to be going on for that long. And I, you know, George DeBell, I think, posited this in his Crick Info article, you know, maybe he's not getting the support he he should have with you know with um, Broad missing a few games and Archer missing games and 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 so forth. Or maybe he's getting a, he's showing his age a little bit. But uh, having watched him in the series, I haven't noticed a particular difference in how he's bowling or how the ball's coming out in the second innings compared to the to the first. He still looks just as grooved as he has been for the last several years. I remember people after the thirteen fourteen Ashes, people were wondering if that was the end of. James Anderson and if you take just his career since then any bowler in the world in history would be proud of I, I don't think it's fruitful going wondering how long he's going to go on to you know we'll wake up one morning and James Anderson won't be a test cricketer anymore and it'll, the world will be a slightly sadder place but I don't know when that's going to come and I'm not sure he does and that's a good thing. Root captaincy uh, I mean in Lord's test he did come across as a slightly defensive captain I'm going to get into trouble saying this but he did come across as a defensive captain in Lords. Did he have to do much in Leeds, or is it was it his tactics getting the new ball on fourth day? What what are the thoughts on Root's captaincy? Well, he he did very well to lose the toss. That was a good start. <laughs> I've been, <laughs> been, been trying for a while. <laughs> he's been trying for a while, and now it's finally it finally worked for him. I thought after the Lords Test, he immediately fronted up to the errors that he'd made as as captain and you know admitted he got suckered into the into the fist fight where you know England didn't need to and it, it was interesting as well how the team very quickly defended him after that and said well hang on no it's not just you captain but but he did he did the captain's job there and he and he took that on the tw- on the chin it's, it's an interesting question did he have to do much at Headingley <laughs> Well, after, you know, the what was it, 78? Was it 78? But he led from the front. And England's big total was built around him. So, uh, and for once, he actually got the chance to come in with some runs on the board rather than digging them out of an enormous hole that the openers had sort of left for him to try and scramble out of. So, I, you know, I, I've heard the argument before, of, you know, our captain's good because if they've got a great team, you know, you tend to win anyway, I think. The captain should take the, the credit for a team that wins and uh, he should take some things on the uh, the chin when they lose. Uh, I, he certainly did nothing wrong at Headingley and I don't recall any yeah. moments where I thought, what's he doing? Or I, I don't recall moments where I thought that field's a bit too defensive. Possibly the first, probably the beginning of India's second innings when they were racking up runs and there were only the two wickets. After the Bearstow catch, I think that was the time when we thought, right, here it is. You know, the tails are up now. And, and it didn't quite happen. And and I think he managed the process. I thought he managed the issue around the new ball exceedingly well. You know, you could see he was right under Kohli's skin at the end of the day when um, he took the new ball, whereas Virat was going, was chuntering and angrily moaning away because he wanted to stay out there. Well, you know, the rules are the rules, Virat. So you could see who's, who was under whose skin 
by yeah. that stage. And if ever there was a decision to, you know, rile the likes of Virat Kohli, even if he didn't mean it that way, that was that was the one. We'll take the new ball now. We'll walk off. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow yeah. it's going to be a brand new ball to to attack to attack you with. That in itself was a sort of both a psychological and a captaincy master masterstroke, I think. Yeah, I, I I do wonder how many other captains, unless you had two really good spinners, I wonder how many other captains would have done otherwise. That just seemed the most obvious logical thing to do, rather than bowling. Root well, except you could that argue point. that the, those two weren't going to be pushing that hard in the gathering gloom, um, and therefore the opportunity potentially to keep bowling with the old ball and maybe winkle one out, and you know, best case even two. I, I think it was the right, and he chose not to do that. I think it was the right move. I don't know that it was a master stroke or anything that was completely out of the box, but it was the it was the correct thing to do and from and the the most the move with the highest chance of success. So absolutely give him credit for that. I think he's been a decent captain over his over his time. Um he certainly seems to have the respect of his of his mm-hmm. team. Um he's I think he sort of slightly joked about this after the last test. So I don't know if this is actually true or not, but I would have to look at the figures, but he's you know, displayed of Anderson and brought a ball a little bit fuller. Um, I don't know if that's again. I don't have the data in front of me, and I would love to see it. Um, which is a difficult, not an easy conversation to have with bowlers of that of that caliber and that experience, even though it's been four years. And he's had decent attacks to work with, but some very some a series of very flaky batting lineups in very tricky batting conditions. And he's had to deal with his own form fluctuating, mm. uh, as well yeah. as being the captain during COVID, which is which kind of been easy for anybody. COVID uh, rest and rotation. Which injuries part- to all your key players. I mean, I mean, yeah. he's he's had a fair bit chucked at him. Uh, some of it, like you know, the ECB shooting itself in the in both feet. Um, and he's watched, you know, Owen Morgan, you know, whatever Owen Morgan wants, he gets. Uh, I'm not sure. Whereas I, I think the struggles have been a bit not not been the case for Joe Root. And he's, I'm not he's sure that I don't think that's quite true. That. If you look at some of the T20 size that England put out in the last few years, but uh, I mean, COVID. I mean, the rest of the rotation was mostly COVID anyway. It was mostly to stop players being in the bubble for four months in 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 one go, um, rather than rather than anything else. I mean, he's had to deal with that as every international mm-hmm. captain has, has had to. I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying that to you know in any way. Uh, detract from the the frankly appalling management of that last final that final morning at Lords, where he is the captain and he fronts up, but the whole team had this collective brain fade. It was like you're ganging up on our dad Jimmy, and we want to we want to give it back. And I'm sure Jimmy Anderson at some point was thinking, "Well, guys, what are you doing?" In fact, I think he, he even said that he even said he thought, "Guys, what are you doing? Uh, just 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 bowl normally. We, I we, I don't need you to to stick up for me in this." ridiculous manner it's always nice when a team when your opening bowler takes three wickets in his first eight overs and you bowl a team up for 78 and you get yourself on a flat pitch and their one their most experienced seamer uh in the Sharma sharma bowls bat bowls poorly but he he managed the situation very well i thought he did well not to get carried away and too antsy on that on that final uh sorry in the end of day three um you know for all that I don't think he particularly bowled too defensively. I think Ollie Robinson could easily have had three wickets on that in that spell, uh, and India could have been bowled out that night uh, on a, on another day. Some of some of what I think we view as captaincy success is just variation and fluctuation and 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 luck, um, frankly, or, or things that aren't necessarily in in someone's control. But at the risk of hiding behind a great, I'm going to do this anyway. Richie Benno once said about about cricket captaincy that it's 90 percent luck and 10 percent skill but don't try it without the 10 percent um yes. and i think we do well to remember that sometimes absolutely yeah. and uh, michael one michael one was saying on craig buzz that he still has one more big step to uh call himself as the greatest captain of england uh joe Root, that is winning an ashes urn so i think that's one last step left for joe Root. Uh, it's a fair reflection of the uh, of the overwhelming priority that the Ashes takes in the mind of the the uh, of kind of popular England cricket fandom, possibly the the Ashes myopia uh, in 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 some ways, and the fact that it might take it too big a role. Yeah, you know, Michael Vaughan won an Ashes series, and so is remembered as a great captain. Um, uh, Mike Brearley has won won the 1981 Ashes series and remembered as a great captain. Douglas Jardine wins Bodyline and is remembered as a great captain. A lot of people, unless you go digging, not that many people know anything about the captaincy of those three other than that in in England. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's not wrong in 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 the sense of 
Um, uh, Ray, don't what? forget Ray Illingworth. Then, if we're going to chuck people into the sure. Ashes winners, um, don't forget our Raymond. He deserves sure. to be in that company. Sure, and, and was it Gower in the in eighty seven? The, the Ashes, for better or worse, is what most England fans care about most, um, and what a lot of English cricket writers care about most. So. So yes, um, if who knows if this Ashes series is going to go ahead or in what guise it's going to go ahead? It's the most logistically complex Ashes series of all time, uh, with the um, with the various quarantines in different states and them changing all the time and uh, all sorts of political pressure not to allow, excuse me, sports people to get special exemptions when Australian citizens can't and the families and all this. I really, I don't know any more than you do, and I think anyone who does say that they know at this stage is 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 fooling themselves. Uh, if it does go ahead, I think this Australia team are there for the taking. 